mention Lebanon and Syria comes to mind. Until the collapse of the Ottoman Empire after World War I, the entire region was considered Greater Syria, and Beirut was run by Damascus. It's only recently that Lebanon was created as a, an independent state. This was a place where the Syrian opposition could come and be safe and uh, uh, maybe plan to regain power uh, from whoever happened to be ruling Syria at the time. Uh, until the Assad family took over in Syria, there was a coup uh, almost every time you turned around. Since the early 60s, the Assad family has tried to keep a tight grip on its neighbor. Syria's influence peaked during Lebanon's bloody civil war from 1975 to 1990. Syrian troops moved in, ostensibly as peacekeepers, deployed across the country and dug in for a long stay. But things changed in 2005. Former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik Hariri was assassinated in February. Anti-Syrian elements accused Bashar al-Assad's regime of killing Hariri. <laughs> Weeks of widespread street protests followed. And in April, Syrian troops withdrew from Lebanon, yielding to popular demand and international pressure. Now, since all these protests in Syria against the Assad regime, uh, what you've seen is Lebanon regaining its past role as a, as a haven for the Syrian opposition. But also, a lot of people are saying, as a platform for the uh, infiltration of men and guns. President Bashar al-Assad has often warned neighboring countries that violence in Syria will spill over sooner or later. On Wednesday, he was interviewed by Russian TV in Damascus. It's becoming clear that this is not spring, but chaos. And as I have said, if you sow chaos in Syria, you may be infected by it yourself. And they understand this perfectly well. Within days of his comments, the clashes in Lebanon began escalating. Some say that al-Assad's allies will steer trouble to ease pressure on the Syrian regime while others see the Syrian uprising barreling over into Lebanon. Rima Mektabi, CNN, Beirut, Lebanon.